Keep it real simple and just do the best you can do. You know, hey, all we can do is all we can do. <laughs> all you can do is the best you can do. And some things are going to fall through the cracks, especially when you're trying to grow, when you're trying to, you know, do a lot of things and help a lot of people. You know, and nothing's going to be perfect. My mission today would be just to try to maybe understand a different perspective and maybe help you tweak what you're doing already for more efficiency, uh, more scalability, more production in less time, you know, things of that nature, right? A more cost efficient business, you know, spending less with more production. This is one of the big, you know, bullet points for you today that I just want to open your eyes up to. And that is look at the dot com crash, 9 11, 2008, the pan. Pandemic. The pandemic still produced 80% of the same amount of not only sales, but pending deals. People were still going under contract, negotiating deals and ratifying deals to close. 80% of the same amount of business was happening during that scariest, complete shutdown of the country. Scariest moment in the last hundred years. You know, that that mid that mid-April to end of March. That was the that was the complete shutdown of the US economy. Everyone was shut down. From there, different states opened up, you know, here and there and opened up to certain percentages and we were still under a lot of restrictions. But for the most part, the economy kind of opened back up and started slowly kind of coming back from that moment. And we all know what happened. We all know what happened during that moment. Number one, the complete shutdown produced 80% of the same amount of not only closings, but pending deals, right? No human to human contact, no human to human contact at all whatsoever. People are still closing deals, titled companies are figuring this thing out. People are going under contract. That goes to show you right there how resilient this industry is. You can't, you can't take it down. Nothing has shook the industry. And so this is one thing I really want you to get today. And I want you to have confidence in your business, in your market, in you, yourself, moving forward that you don't care if the market does do this, do that, up, down, interest rates, supply, demand, the amount of houses on the market. It does doesn't matter. <laughs> None of that matters. The only thing that matters is what's right in front of you today. Are you going to do what you what you need to do today? Right? Are you going to work as hard as you can? Are you going to be the best you can be? Okay? And are you going to create five new relationships with property owners every single day and add those people to your database? It's really that simple. It's really that simple. And then take that data and build your personal brand through a weekly email as your foundation and sprinkle social media on top of that. Are you going to do that because it's really that simple and all that costs basically nothing you don't have to buy leads for thousands of dollars you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on real estate coaching that's going to teach you stuff you already know get rid of those thousands of dollars of expenses that people are telling you you need all you have to do every single day right is not worry about all these outside factors that don't mean anything and just focus on am i going to create five new relationships with property owners in my market today and do that every day right and i'll, and I'll give you the formula to that in a second but when i got back in the business in 2008. The reason I was saying that is because people like agents today, I see a lot of agents trying to put these automatic systems in place, right? To have their business automatic where deals just flow to them before they put the sweat equity in to build their brand to the point where they can put those automated systems in place. They're not putting the equity in, the sweat equity, the work to build those relationships first to build a brand. They're just trying to put the automatic systems in and trying to put something in place where they don't have to do any of that sweat equity stuff. But I'm sorry, there's no way around that part of it. Okay. So, and I'll give you a good example of this because you can build your brand, right? And you can build it up to a point where things do get automatic. And that's what I want to help you guys visualize today. Over the next three to five years, you could actually have a business that is very automatic that runs on past clients, referrals and referrals of referrals. Okay. I've got a large plate. I can handle a lot of stuff. Some people can handle more than me. Some people can't. Some people have four pendings and two listings and that their, their whole month is shot. I don't understand that, but it's true because of our mental capacities and what people can handle, what people think about. So moving forward, I want you guys to be more efficient. I want you to think cost efficiency. I want you to think scalability. The weekly email, that's something where once you make a great first impression with someone, they never forget who you are. Every single person you come in contact with, great first impression, they never forget who you are, ever. That's something you can scale because it doesn't matter if there's 50, 500, 5,000, 50,000 people in that list. It still only takes you 
you 30 minutes a week, no matter how many people are on that list. And you're able to connect and stay in front of that many people for an incredibly cheap price um, in a very professional way where they feel a little bit of you because you create the email. It's your opinions on stuff. It, it has a little bit of you in there, even though they know it's a bulk email, right? It's original content. It's not drip campaigns. It's not how to cook shrimp etouffee. It's not what color to paint your walls in the fall. 10 buyer tips to win offers in the spring, right? National stats. Nobody wants to see national stats, guys. Nobody wants to see what the average prices are doing nationally. They want to know what's going on in their market, okay? Local stats. If you make it, can make it right now, you can make it through any market. Any other market is a cake walk. Some new agents are coming in saying, Ricky, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting into real estate, but people are saying the market might crash. I don't want to get into real estate and then the market crash. What am I going to do? And I, I look at them and I say, man, listen, you don't understand what a blessing a market crash would be for you as a new agent. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine if prices come down a tad, if demand comes down a tad, if inventory comes up a tad, right? Could you imagine a seller that wants to upgrade actually being able to put his house in the market and have time to actually pick out what house he wants to upgrade to? It would be a dream come true for us as agents, right? That don't, please don't be scared of market swings, right? It's going to be an incredibly positive thing. It's mother nature. We can't help it. It's going to happen. But think about how great it would be if, if the market balanced out a tad. That's what we need, right? So my mission is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry one agent at a time and help agents not pay for coaching, not pay for leads, and really simplify the business. Too many people are out there trying to overcomplicate this business, okay? They're trying to overcomplicate this business. Why? Because they have some kind of program they want to sell you, or they, they're trying to say, if you'll just hire me as a coach, I'll make everything easy for you kind of deal. It, it, it doesn't work like that. And I noticed this because I hired a coach, right? I hired a coach back in 2015, and I saw how the whole game was played. And um, so it kind of inspired me to, to step up and do, do things like this. But one thing that I teach in that, that course is the Google Sheet right? I keep a Google sheet, you know, it's a C, it's a CRM basically, you know, it's a Google sheet. I can put leads there. I can kind of put where I am with them, what the follow-up is and all that good stuff, why they're looking to do stuff, when they're looking to do it, so on and so forth. So don't overcomplicate it. Keep it real simple and just do the best you can do. You know, Hey, all we can do is all we can do. <laughs> all you can do is the best you can do. And some things are going to fall through the cracks, especially when you're trying to grow, when you're trying to, you know, do a lot of things and help a lot of people, you know, is nothing's going to be perfect. Guys, listen. Do, you know, Ricky's Kentucky Deal of the Week and just send one listing every week if you got to, if you can't come up with stuff, okay? Do something, all right? And what's very interesting about email marketing is everybody's so concerned with unsubscribes and, e and open rates. I don't even look at that. Definitely don't care about the unsubscribes. What are you going to do there? Open rate, I don't have time to look at it, okay? And what's far more interesting to me is the fact that this is why I do email marketing. 90% of the people on your list organically are going to see it in their inbox. That's a 90% organic reach versus one, two, three, four, five percent uh, organic reach on social media. So do you want to build a foundation of your business on 5% of organic reach that 5% of the followers you have on that page actually see your content? Or do you want to build your the foundation of your personal brand on a 90% organic reach model, right? That's why I choose email.